Are we truly alone in the universe? With an estimated $10 circumflex, $24 a septillion, potentially habitable planets in the observable universe, the odds seem stacked against it. Yet we found nothing. This haunting silence is at the heart of a new loneliness zone hypothesis. But what if the answer isn't just far away, but hiding in plain sight? Recently, NASA's LASCO solar probe captured images of the interstellar comet 3I Atlas as it passed behind the sun, and the resulting photos have ignited a firestorm of controversy, revealing mysterious shapes and unexplained disappearances that demand a closer look. Let's first address this really cool text about the search for life outside Earth, published in Universe Today, and based on an article that will also be here in the description below. Reminder, all my research sources are always here in the description below for you who are watching to check out as well. So let's comment on this article here that asks, are we in the universe's loneliness zone? Is that why we can't find any sign of life? So these are the topics I will cover in today's video. If you want to support the channel, you like my work and want to support it, it's very easy. Just leave a like below or a comment, which already helps a lot for YouTube to understand that this video has engagement and spread it to more and more people. I leave my thanks here. Today's video is packed with information for you. Now let's go talk about today's science information. So let's talk about the universe, my friends. Remembering that the comments you send, I'm always reading your comments here, will be at the end of the video, all right? So let's start then with this Universe Today article, which has as its theme, the search for life outside Earth. And what are they proposing here? Title, are we in the universe's loneliness zone? A new study published in Acta Astronautica, signed by Antal Veres from the Hungarian University of Agriculture, proposes the concept of the loneliness zone, a statistical range where there is a greater chance of there being only one civilization of a certain technological level in the universe instead of several or none. So he is proposing here that each region of the universe may have a zone where only one technological civilization can exist, being alone there. This concept adds a fascinating, almost tragic layer to the Fermi paradox. The mystery isn't just where are they, but are they destined to be isolated? This loneliness zone could be a statistical inevitability, a cosmic quarantine imposed by the sheer scale of time and space ensuring civilizations rise and fall like ships in the night, never aware of each other. The model combines classic ideas from astrobiology, such as the Fermi paradox, which questioned where all the aliens are, the great filter, which are improbable stages of evolution, such as the emergence of life and all that, and the Kardashev scale, which measures technological advancement used here by the use of energy of each alien civilization. It also expands, and does it apply to us too? We haven't even reached number one on the Kardashev scale. And it also expands the Drake equation to the entire universe, considering about $10 circumflex, $24 potentially habitable planets, many potentially habitable planets in the universe. And Ives tested four scenarios in the extremes, easy life or almost impossible life. The chance of us being alone is practically zero. Oh. That's optimistic for those who have the hope of detecting life outside Earth. But in the intermediate scenario of the rare Earth hypothesis, where complex life is extremely unlikely but possible, there is about a 29% to 30% probability of us being alone in this range of complexity. The conclusion of this article that is here, I'll leave it here below in the description, is that although it is unlikely that we are the only civilization in the universe, civilizations much, much more advanced than ours, tend to enter their own loneliness zone, simply because it is rare for two to reach the same technological level at the same time. It's something I always say here on the channel. The article is here for anyone who wants to check it out later. So they say, right, that it is quite unlikely that we are alone in the universe, but for two technological civilizations to coexist in the same region of the universe, it is quite unlikely, according to these calculations, these models that were made. It's something I've already commented on with you. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. That is a long time 
So civilizations may have emerged, evolved, and ended without us ever knowing about them. We are here. Modern humans have been here for a little over 200,000 years, and that is very little compared to the age of the universe. So several alien civilizations may have emerged, but at very separate times. And so if one exists coexisting with us and a technological civilization coexisting, it may be very, very far away here in another corner of the universe. So it would be very difficult for them to contact each other. That's what this study is proposing here. I'll leave it here below in the description for anyone who wants to read it. Now, folks, let's talk about the three I Atlas, right? That it was photographed by NASA's LASCO probe. Let's go. This graph is very interesting for us to see where the position of three I Atlas is. Here are the dates. Earth is here in blue and three I Atlas is here, right? Let me start the animation again here for you to see more or less where it is at this moment. So let's go. It's leaving. This is back to June, February, June. It was here. August, September, we are here. It's still visible. October, look, we are here, and it is behind the sun, look, in relation to Earth. Then in November, it will reappear to us again. Then the LASCO probe, which is a solar probe, is there monitoring the sun. It took images of 3i Atlas. Where is 3i Atlas? Well, here is the sun, the image. In this region is 3i Atlas, October 2025. Then they zoomed in, and here it is. This little dot here is 3i Atlas. And it was a huge feat to have managed to capture 3i Atlas in this image. Then there was this post here on the Medium blog by David Sarida that gave a zoom on the image and discovered this configuration here, these images here. I'm going to read his text and comment with you here on some observations he is making here about the geometry size and everything else. Look, the 20th of October 2025, interstellar comet 3i Atlas was ideally positioned to be captured by NASA's LASCO Solar Telescope, an instrument aboard the SOHO probe that observes the solar corona by blocking its direct light. Some users noticed a widespread internet outage on the same day. Then he says that, wow, on the day three, I Atlas was captured. The internet went down. People complained about the internet going down. Only this is a common coincidence, folks. Major global network outages are generally caused by failures in submarine cables and providers and not by astronomical events. So it has nothing to do with the passage of 3i Atlas in the way the text is suggesting here. The attempt to link a celestial event to a terrestrial network failure is a classic example of the correlation causation fallacy. While it feeds into a narrative of cosmic importance that the object is so powerful it affects our technology, there is zero evidence to support it. It's a tempting but purely conspiratorial leap. Then continuing here, he talks about the absence of the SDO and the mystery of the images. The Solar Dynamic Observatory, the SDO and other NASA solar observatories, have been offline since the 13th of September 2025 due to a technical failure. Then he insinuates here in the text that it is very strange, right, for these solar observatories to be turned off at such a crucial moment. Only this is normal, folks, in long missions. This observatory, the Solar Dynamic Observatory, has more than 15 years of operation. So sometimes it stops. This is not rare. It is even frequent. It is normal for a probe that has been working for so long. And then he tries to correlate it as a coincidence in relation to the passage of 3i Atlas. But this always happens. There is a history of it. This mystery is another pillar of conspiracy thinking. The convenient shutdown. The assumption is that authorities must be hiding something. The mundane reality is that complex, aging hardware in the harsh environment of space fails. This isn't a cover-up, it's predictable mechanical wear and tear. Then some claim that NASA edited the LASCO images to hide 3i Atlas, but he says here in the text that this is unlikely. In practice, LASCO frequently suffers from compression artifacts, saturation by charged particles, and noise and cosmic ray detection. I've brought here some that were near the sun, remember? 
I recently brought a video that had found UFOs around the sun, something like that. And it was all noise, all this that I'm talking about, charged particles, everything else that people thought were UFOs and that were there in public NASA articles. Because if it was something strange, it posted it there and didn't notice. But anyway, this is common, folks. These structures appear in the images of Lasco of these solar observatories. Then there is the part where he talks about the geometry, what he is talking about here. Let me zoom in on the image. The most recent image shows 3i Atlas as a diffuse spot near the Sunday. Comparisons with captures made by ESA, ExoMars and Mars Express circulate online, suggesting that the object would be planetary in size, something impossible. So 3i Atlas, folks, according to the most recent estimates that were captured of it, measures only a few hundred meters in diameter. Some people say between 500 meters, well, a few hundred meters in diameter, not something the size of a planet, especially because this would shake, as the song says, the orbits of the planets, and that is not happening. This is perhaps the most significant mysterious element. The zoomed in images do look strange. They resemble something artificial, like a bat, or as the text notes, an empire ship from Star Wars. This is the core of the mystery that has captured people's attention. While the Lasco coronagraphic filters amplify and distort the brightness, creating light halos and optical artifacts that may seem gigantic. So this here is all an artifact of the filters used here to generate the images. And this is the same as taking an image with a very low resolution and trying to zoom in a lot. It will look weird, especially because 3i Atlas in this case would be changing shape. Here it is appearing, I don't know, a bat. Here, that, that Star Wars ship, um, Starfighter, I don't remember its name now, but anyway, that Empire ship there from Star Wars. So no, this here is an artifact generated due to the coronagraphic filters. Then he also talks here in the text about the disappearance and return of the object. In some frames, the object disappears between minute 842 and 9.6 and reappears at 9 minutes and 42. Later, it disappears again at 15 minutes and five. These intervals coincide. Then there is a part here in the text where he talks about the disappearance and return of the object. Three eye atlas would have disappeared, reappeared. Then he says here, look, in some frames, the object disappears between 8.42 minutes and 96 minutes and reappears at 9.42. Later, it disappears again at 15.5. These intervals, folks, coincide with the automatic adjustments, exposure, and calibration of the coronagraph that I just mentioned here. Besides the passage of solar particles and coronal mass ejections that saturate the sensor. So this is in accordance with what is expected from this type of instrument. There is nothing wrong here. When the software filters these noises, the object can disappear from one sequence and reappear in the following one without anything strange having erased it. So it is normal. It is part of it here. Whoever analyzes these images from Soho and everything else a lot is already used to seeing this kind of thing. This disappearing act feels incredibly mysterious as if the object is cloaking or phasing, but this mystery, like the others, has a technical explanation. The sensor is being blinded by the sun and its automatic systems are trying to compensate. The object isn't vanishing, it's just being temporarily lost in the digital noise and the sensor's automated cleanup process. He mentions Avi Loeb at the end here. The astrophysicist Loeb commented that if 3i Atlas were an artificial interstellar ship, it could launch mini probes in gravitational maneuvers close to the Sunday but Loeb himself mentions, he quotes that now is not the right moment for 3i Atlas to release mini probes. He mentions this, this claim by Avi Loeb. Only Loeb himself treated this as a pedagogical hypothesis, okay? In his first article, he talks about a pedagogical hypothesis to illustrate how advanced civilizations could use solar gravity, the so-called Oberth maneuver, which he always mentions and not as an assertion that 3i Atlas is artificial. He repeated everything I'm saying. Uh, whenever he can on his blog, he says that all this is a hypothesis and so on. Uh, only people take it out of context. In the initial article itself, where he starts talking about this hypothesis of 3i Atlas being a ship, 
he says it is a pedagogical exercise. You understand? So the guy uses it here and that's it. I had already analyzed a text by this guy here on Medium, and he had also made some very fanciful claims. I think he had correlated 3i Atlas with the apparitions of Fatima. I didn't even want to go into detail on this issue because that's a matter of belief. So everyone has their own, so I won't interfere, but he correlated it. So you can understand that this guy here has a somewhat fanciful view of, of 3i Atlas. I don't say fanciful, but perhaps a more wild speculation, as people like to use in scientific articles about 3i Atlas. But everything I'm saying here, folks, is based on articles related to discoveries made by the satellites and everything else. I'll leave everything here below in the description. Everything I'm saying here has a source. I have my research source here below for you to check everything I'm saying. I'm not discrediting what the guy is saying. I'm just showing here what actually happens in the images that are captured by Lasco. So everything he presents here corresponds to the methodology of this satellite, all right? So everything will be here below in the description. I'll also leave his text here for you to read and draw your own conclusions about what he is saying here about 3i Atlas. So that's it, folks. So we have the, uh, the image of 3i Atlas here captured by, um, where is it? Here, look. Um, oh, no, here by Lasco. Um, 3i Atlas is here. People say, ah, NASA is stopped. No, NASA hasn't stopped, folks. It just has fewer people working there because of the lockdown, that's all. But it hasn't stopped, folks. It's working there. And here it is, look. Now let's see. Look, for November, December, it will be here, folks. It will be here, look. January, it will be going away. Then it will pass close to Jupiter when they might use the Juno probe to try to observe it, which I think is difficult because the Juno probe, folks, is already quite old. It's already low on fuel, so any maneuver to make it do something other than its primary mission could be a risk both for Juno as it could get lost in space and for the frustration of not being able to photograph 3i Atlas the way we would like. So I don't know NASA, JPL, which administers the Juno mission. I don't know if they will end up accepting this observation proposal, but I will keep an eye on it here, monitoring. When there is any update on this, I'll bring it to you. As soon as 3i Atlas comes out from behind the sun, new data will come. Everything that comes out about 3i Atlas, I'll bring it here for you so you don't miss anything. You already know, subscribe to the channel, all right? I'm going to end this video here. Bye.